Ladies first. No, no, no. Yeah, we're increasing the town Please. council for the audit. Doesn't cost. matter. Okay, the board has enough in it for their budget. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> nicer than that. Right? That is the only deviation to get it from. She said he, he would put it in though. Okay. okay. Or you can just say you're going to keep going down the other until Jody gets you. Good, yeah. Not bad. <coughs> How's the child? Did the child go on Friday? No, I ain't going. Well, thank you. This Friday. Ah. Still do the pledges and all this. Today, I had a bridge yeah, board. Just, I'm just waiting. Do we do? No. Good evening and welcome to the special meeting of Monday, May 14th. Um, may I have Councillor Lesser lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Did you do it last time? I did. Oh, see, I didn't have the minutes to check. Sorry. <laughs> All right, we're going to move into council action. Um, if we could hold off on item A, adoption of the town of Weathersfield budget, and wait yeah. for Councillor Latina. Do we take attendance. Or? Oh, that would be good, huh? I'm trying to move things along. Right. Go ahead, Dolores, please. Councillor Breton. Here. Councillor Porras. Here. Councillor Hurley. Here. Councillor Latina will be late. Councillor Lesser. Here. Councilor Rell. Here. Councilor Spinella. Here. Deputy Mayor Martinez. Here. Martinez. Mayor Mo uh, Morin Bell. Here. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Now, if we could uh, move into council action, if we could move to item 1B, the approval of the purchase of body cameras for the Wethersfield Police Department. Do we have a motion for that? Yes, a uh, motion to authorize acceptance of the Office of Policy and Management Body Worn Recording Equipment Grant for the purchase of body cameras for the Weathersfield Police Department and allowing <coughs> asset forfeiture funds for the initial purchase. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Town Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. The Chief has asked that uh, we approve the purchase and uh, acquisition of the, the grant funds. The grant funds are going to change substantially after July. So he felt it was important to move these forward. This is the purchase of 30 body, cam body cameras and associated software and hardware. Uh, there's sufficient funds in the asset forfeiture account to cover the, cover the purchase. Okay, are there any questions? I'll yeah, I don't see anybody here to talk on them because he had a lot of questions last time about how they worked and how he was going to use them and all that. I and think those have been resolved but, for him. Okay. Was he was, uh, yeah, I, I expected him to be here too. <coughs> but he's not. So we can move on. Pri with privacy one. issues and all that. Mm -hmm. We can hold for a few minutes. Okay. You have a question for Mike? Well, if we hold, I can, you know, go with my questions whenever it's appropriate in the future. If he does come in okay. or if somebody from the police department comes in. <coughs> okay. Uh, move to table for an, uh, to the call of the chair, one B. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Okay. We will put that on the table, awaiting the arrival of the police chief. How about item one C? Authorization to submit a local transportation capital improvement <coughs> program grant. Make a motion to authorize the submission of a 2018 local transportation capital improvement program grant. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Yep. Good evening, Derek. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. 
Okay, apologize for the delay. Let me just uh, pull up a couple of plans here so I could show you as I explain um, what we're looking to do. Yeah. Oh, all right. So I'm not ready yet. Okay, I'll get started. I'm here tonight, uh, Madam Mayor and members of the council, uh, to talk about seeking an application for load SIP funding through the state. Uh, load SIP funding is local capital, local capital uh, transportation capital improvement program funds. It's state funds that's administered by CROG. Um, this year they put out a solicitation, usually it's every few years. This year a road solicitation totaling 25.5 million um, each uh, COG, and we are with CROG, uh, Capital Region and Council of Governments, uh, puts out solicitations for municipalities to be able to apply for funds. Uh, for this particular uh, phase, it's for road construction, uh, which includes uh, road reconstruction money and also road rehabilitation money. Um, they have different pools. So we are seeking to put in two applications, one that would go into each, each pool of money. Um, the, uh, the, I'll, I'll go through both of them. <clears throat> the minimum cost for each project is $300,000. The maximum award to a municipality is $3 million. Um, we're, we're allowed two applications. Uh, the way this program fund works, it's 100% funded through construction by the program. The town is responsible for just design costs with this. Um, so what you don't see in front of you, and I think you might have in your packets, is Walker Hill Road was going to be our first application. Um, Walker Hill Road, that would extend from Jordan Lane. <laughs> we, we do have a piece of paper, right? Yeah. <laughs> Were you hooked up before? I don't know. Is he just pulling this up? Yeah. We all have this. We all have this. Yeah, we all have this. Yeah, well, we can work with that. That's not what I was going to show you, but oh, that, right. I can talk you through it. Yeah. Right, you guys can work on that. So I'll apologize for the technical difficulties. That's how my Monday's been going. <laughs> um, so uh, we're looking at one project, which is a full road reconstruction from Wolka, along Wolka Hill Road from Jordan Lane to the Hartford Town Line, um, really to the first intersection of Hartford, which is Victoria Road. You know, this stretch of road sees a lot of traffic. It's a regional benefit. Uh, there are two state facilities, Department of Labor, Department of Corrections, that are on this road, um, as well as it's kind of a gateway to and from Weathersfield as you transition to Franklin Ave and, and Hartford. Um, basically, with this type of project it's really too expensive for us to do as part of our annual uh, paving program um, the scope is too complex and the costs are too high um, which is why it would be a good candidate for these types of funds if we can secure them uh, as a means of getting the road reconstructed some of the ex existing issues that we have out there that we're looking to address with this uh, application would be um, you know obviously if you've been on that road it's been very, very poor road conditions uh, most of that's related to the fact that underneath the pavement there is an eight inch thick concrete base beneath the road and that over time has cracked at different locations at the joints and those are reflecting through to the pavement. So where we have the concrete base joints, we have very significant potholes forming and defects in the road. The town is out there a lot trying to patch them and do small repairs over the years, but this has been an ongoing problem for quite some time. If you've driven down it, there's very wide travel lanes. Uh, they range from 15 feet to 30 feet wide, um, which leads to increased uh, speeds out there and also just driver confusion, not being sure where they're supposed to be uh, driving when there's vehicles parked or buses out there. Um, there are eight bus stops in this route, so CT Transit, both going northbound and southbound along Wolka Hill, do have a lot of facilities that they are stopping at. 
um, as well as a couple of bus stops. There's one southbound just north of Jordan Lane where the bus stops and it takes up one of the two lanes there, causes problems when a bus is there. And also for the northbound direction when they stop in front of the Department of Labor, these are stops I've spoken to CT Transit that where they have um, extended wait times, the buses do sit there for a period of time and they block one of the lanes there too. So it leads to a lot of traffic congestion and it's just not a safe condition that we have out there. Um, also, just re regards to pedestrians, we don't have, we do have crosswalks crossing Mocha Hill Road, but we don't have any uh, sidewalk ramps there, any ramps at all. So it's not ADA compatible. So those people waiting on the sidewalk for the bus, this time of year, they walk across the grass shelf and get on the bus. But when there's snow and it's piled up, these areas aren't necessarily clean. So they're forced to walk to the next intersection and get on the bus there. Um, so there's some safety issues we can address. Um, what we're looking to do with the plan, which you see the limits on the plan that you have in front of you. Um, I'll just go through some of the improvements. Um, one is what we need to do there because of the fact we've got about a two to four inch pavement section over eight inch concrete base that is failing. So we're gonna take everything out, it's a full excavation, take out the base, put back processed av aggregate base material that we normally would have on roads and a pavement thickness over that. Um, we're looking at this more of a complete streets project. So because we have a lot of width out there, and it's underutilized because I said we have excessive lane widths. Um, we can bring in some uh, complete street features like bike lanes, uh, bus stop lanes, bus turnoffs. Some of those things are, uh, are, are available out there. I have talked to CT Transit about which stops that would make the most sense at, and they've given us some recommendations and feedback on our plan thus far. In general, we're keeping the island that's out there. It's grassed island with trees, so we want to maintain that. Um, as you may have seen, the plows, you know, trying to plow around those are hitting up the curbs, the bituminous curb breaks. So because of the fact that uh, Franklin Ave has granite curb, I think it would make sense to try and carry the granite curb down through the project. That is covered as part of the program. They will pay for that. Um, so looking to kind of extend that granite curb look down through this area would help both in aesthetics and also in just durability of uh, plowing operations just to keep the islands and the exterior uh, edges of the road just cleaner and neater than they have been in the past. So in doing that, we'll be able to maintain pretty much the existing road width. Uh, northbound, we would have two 11-foot travel lanes. So instead of the 15-foot lanes we have now, we reduce, reduce them down to 11, which is standard and recommended for traffic calming measures. Um, in doing that, we could leave an uh, eight and a half foot shoulder on the right side of the road that could be used for buses to stop um, and also double as a bike lane. So at least the buses can get off the roadway and maintain still the two through lanes going northbound and not be in the way. Going southbound, we would maintain, look, similar to what we have, one 11-foot uh, wide travel lane with a bike designated bike lane in the southbound direction, five feet wide, and then a parallel parking lane um, along the, along the, for the residents that are there that um, from time to time do park in the road. Part of the project, CT Transit, you know, recommend that we include putting in concrete pads at the bus stops. Um, they are talking with the state facilities. There might be some opportunity to reduce some of them. Like I said, we have eight. Um, they said there are opportunities that they can either eliminate or combine stops um, or relocate them closer. One thing we were talking about and is included in the plan we propose is uh, where we put the new bus shelter in. Uh, last year, Greater Hartford Transit District installed the bus shelter. We'd have a full bus turn off there where they can pull out of the, the lane that's for the bikes and uh, completely out of the road and we could stack two buses there because they will have two stops, maybe three, utilizing that location. So. Um, it could be an improvement where we have the granite curb kind of bump out, let the bus buses pull off the road, a little bit of sidewalk improvements with the granite curb going along the front <coughs> of that, that new uh, shelter that was put in. Um, as part of this, I mentioned pedestrian. Uh, we'll put in new sidewalk ramps where we have crossings now. We're going to put in ramps so they're ADA uh, compatible. Um, one of the issues out there now is the three crossings that we have at the side streets are very long. They're about 80 feet. Um, being that you're crossing two lanes of traffic and one lane in the other way, it's a long stretch. There's really no refuge because they are outside the islands. So as part of this, we were thinking about, um, from a maintenance perspective, we didn't want to put the, uh, the pedestrian crossing through the island because then it's just more maintenance on town staff. But what we can do is at the nose of the islands where we have the crosswalks, it's put some like flush um, brick pavers, something to differentiate it. It's not road, but it's something that's plowable and easy to maintain. And at least that way, halfway through the road, a pedestrian gets a break before they go through the next half of the road and they're not standing in the middle of the intersection like they are now waiting to cross. Um, and talking with CT Transit, they do have uh, people that do use the bus um, and coming to the facility that do cross the road and um, suggested you know, that would be a, a good improvement to include. We have uh, spoken to the city of Hartford. Um, 
because the town line is about 150 feet short of the intersection with Victoria Road, uh, we felt it would make sense just to carry the project to the intersection. Uh, CROG is a regional um, authority, so they look at regional projects and the fact that it crosses the town line, they were amenable to. It doesn't have to just stay in Weathersfield. I think it would give us a better product. Um, I have spoken with the city of Hartford. They're agreeable to that. They offered some comments on some thoughts that they'd like to see in their, their short section of the project. Um, at least that way it would bring it fully from the physical intersection at Jordan Lane up to the physical intersection at Victoria Road. We would not be going into the intersection, just bringing it up to where the radius is uh, flare out. So that was uh, Wolcott Hill Road. The other uh, project, I think I had written up in there, the estimated cost for that, once you, CROG makes us factor in uh, contingencies and incidental work, is about 2.4 million. So we have about uh, half a million, $600,000 left that we could put in another project. Um, so as I stated, there was money set aside for reconstruction like Wolcott Hill Road. There's also money set, set aside for resurfacing projects, which are more like our traditional mill and pave type projects, as long as it's an arterial or collected roadway. So what we're proposing is to put in Highland Street uh, from the Rocky Hill town line up to Thornbush Road would cost about that much once, once you factor in all their um, contingencies that they make us put in. So that would be a, a straight uh, mill and overlay, two inch mill and overlay like we, like we normally do. Um, this is a road that sees a lot of traffic. It is something that we expected we were going to have to be doing as part of our paving program in future years. So if we could, uh, you know, obviously get state funds for this. Uh, there would be no design cost for this because it's pretty straightforward. It's something of a limited scope that we can do that work in house. Um, so really there'd be no out of pocket for the town at all on that project. Um, just be able to do it if it were selected. Right now, um, the road's about 40 feet wide and there's two lanes, so we've got about 20 foot wide lanes. Um, I think it would benefit our application if we propose some white line striping to go down there to narrow up the road lanes just for keeping traffic together and slowing traffic and also provide some space for um, you know, bicycle use too, even though it's not a designated bike area. Anytime you can do that, um, they're always amenable to that. So I think that would help our application a little bit. <coughs> um, as far as I'm sure you're thinking about curbing, <laughs> um, they do allow some curb replacement as part of the mill and overlay rehabilitation work, not full, um, similar to what we do even on the regional basis. They expect there'll be some not full, so we would do similar like we, what we do with our other programs. We replace all the catch basin tops, and we would, you know, I would assume we replace probably about 50%. That's generally what we do as needed uh, along the roads, and that would be covered as part of the program. Um, so generally with these two, we're looking for a type of facilities that see a lot of traffic that might benefit in the case of Walker Hill Road, Hartford residents because it's right on the line. In the case of Highland Street, Rocky Hill residents because it's right on the line, so that gives us additional points as far as our application. Um, Right now they're soliciting, uh, applications are due to CROG uh, next week. They review it, once they make a decision, it goes to DOT, DOT makes final decisions. They said probably sometime in the fall they'd be making their recommendations on what projects might see funding out of this. And um, you know, just given the state of uh, finances right now, they've you know, forewarned us that money is not gonna be readily available. Um, they're telling us it'd be 2020 at the earliest for any of these projects. Um, which, you know, for a job, if we had gotten something like Boca Hill Road, we need a little bit of time to design and get that all out to bid and everything else anyway. So, you know, we're looking at 2020 or later for these funds if we were selected. Um, there is no obligation from the town at this point financially to put in the applications. You know, if at such time we are awarded either one of these and if it's Boca Hill Road and there may be some design costs, you know, there's different ways we can talk about trying to address that and come up with those funds when the time arises, if that's the case. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Deputy Mayor? Uh, <clears throat> Derek, on the Walcott Hill project, I think on the other side of Walcott Hill, Jordan Lane heading down, where the uh, islands are, I think there's is there um, sprinklers in there for the uh, plantings in there? I had heard there were, yes. When we do this part, we'll be looking at sprinkling this at the same time because we're cutting through the road? We could. Um, th those islands that I think you're referring to just south of the Route 515 overpass are landscaped islands. I think they have a lot of flowers right. and landscaping. Um, we're thinking with these on the north side, they would still be grass islands that we mow, but not having necessarily plantings or landscaping them. So really, you know, those details we certainly work out when we get to design level uh, talks. But uh, at this point, the thought was just to leave them grass. We'd mow them, we'd maintain the trees that are there, but not get too heavily in the landscape. So whether or not we we need that, I guess, would be a discussion we can have when we get to that point. Okay. Any other questions? Councilor Hurley? What did Hartford ask for? You said they asked for stuff on their part of um, the road. They had uh, suggested we looked at doing, as we come up to Victoria Road, uh, replacing the two sidewalk ramps on the south side of the intersection that would adjoin our project. 
They just asked that if we could include doing just the ramps on the north side so that way we have complete ADA access control okay. through the intersection. Really was the only concern they had. All right, thank you. You're welcome. And the, and the bike lanes on R2 would also tie in. They have bike lanes in Hartford. If you go north of Victoria Road, they have designated bike lanes. So these would just basically be tying into that, um, which I think will help benefit our application to carry those further south. Councilor Ralph. Thank you, Derek. Uh, roughly how long of a stretch is this? I may have missed it in the beginning. This is for the Hartford line to uh, Jordan. It's about, uh, I want to say about 2,600 feet. Half a mile? Yes. Uh, and we're talking about a cost of up to uh, $2.4 million? Yes. Well, <laughs> as, I, as I stated, um, the fact that they, they do make you be very conservative with the numbers because they typically, there is an allowance for a 20% increase on any project, but they, you know, they want to be conservative so that people aren't coming back. So they make us put in a lot of contingency. I don't think construction will realistically cost that much. Um, just based on how they want us to estimate it, that's, that's what the, it includes. The um, reason why, too, that's so expensive is a couple of reasons. One, it's, it's the explanation we got to pull out all that concrete road base. That's the only way we're ever going to get that road to be right again. Otherwise, it's going to be a keep putting a Band-Aid on it. So there's a significant cost to take out all that concrete base. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, in the application, I'll state this. We've done pavement cores out there, so we've done about a dozen cores, and we know the limits roughly. But I think there are probably some ends at the top, north end and south end, that may not have it. But we'll get into that in further detail when we get into design. So this assumes full box out for the whole length. I think that will be cut back a little bit when we get to real design. And then we're also having to bring back all that processed base. We can't reclaim because it's concrete. We would do that reclamation process with bituminous to make a base, mm -hmm. but being concrete, um, I mean, there are, that, that is an option. I've, I've seen, I've heard that that can be done. You know, it might be something we look at, but most likely right now for a, from a being conservative perspective, we say we're taking it all out, putting the process back and putting all the pavement back. Um, and then again, I mentioned going from the bituminous to the granite curb is, uh, you know, a significant expense. Um, granite curb is expensive to put in. We don't have a lot of it in town, but once it's there, it, it'll stay there a long time. Um, and also very resistant to plow damage and such. Mm -hmm. So this might be an opportunity because it just abuts uh, Hartford, even though that's not our normal standard. Um, they, they had said they would, you know, certainly, uh, you know, consider that uh, as part of the application without, without an issue. Okay. Granite curbing like you said you know not resistant to uh plows or anything like that but they withhold up a little bit better than so we would save in the long run of having to go out and recurb every spring yeah and that's different than a normal road because of the fact they're coming in and out of these islands all the time for all the cut through streets mm -hmm. so uh, i think it'd be a more durable product and you know it's something i think certainly the town probably wouldn't be trying to do on their own but if we have the opportunity to have funding and it matches nicely with our budding neighbor um, that we're working into Hartford with, I think it would make sense. Well, Hartford's, Hartford's um, they do have granite curves, so their stretch of the road, they'd probably like to see that anyway. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the carrying it down would be reasonable. It did scare me at first looking at that. You did an excellent job of kind of bringing me down a little bit and get to reality that it's not going to cost twenty four hundred or twenty four two point four million dollars um, But uh, I got a little nervous there thinking this is why the state of Connecticut is where we are right now the need of tolls and increased gas tax because the cost of you know road construction or any type of uh, um, infrastructure improvements is kind of getting out of control uh, but uh, if there truly is eight inches of concrete and pavement you know throughout that entire half <coughs> mile stretch then yeah we would have to go up to 2.4 million but hopefully not and uh, we can we can come in a lot lower thank you Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> motion passes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, do I have a motion to take off the table the body cameras for the Weathersfield PD? Move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. Good evening, Chief. I apologize. I didn't know you had a council meeting tonight. I thought it was next week. <laughs> no worries. Glad you're here. Um, if you could just go over the purchase of body cameras, and I think council members had some questions for you. Very good. 
the body cams is something I've been very reluctant to do because of the stipulations and the policy that came out from the state, from OPM. Um, they made it so it was almost impossible to use them. Uh, it almost put the officer in a position where he's going to fail because he has to turn around and he has to shut it off in certain instances. And to be honest with you, if, the, if it really gets, if he's really in a bad situation, the last thing he's thinking about doing is turning on a camera. It's not like the dash cams in the car. When you flip on the lights, that automatically starts the recording of the, of the cameras. So, and that's what they're used to. It, with the body camera, you don't have lights on you, so you have to physically turn it on. And there are certain instances, and some of those instances, I'm not sure the reasoning behind it, where you have to turn it on and you have to shut it off. Um, so that's why I was reluctant to do this, because of those policies. The state of Connecticut OPM, Office of Policy and Management, is offering a 100% reimbursement grant on the body cams. No one was taking them. The state police had to because that was the law that the legislature passed, is that they had to get the body cams. They were supposed to be in place by July 1st, 2016, and they're still not in place. I don't think it had anything to do with the uh, policy, but what it had to do was the fact that they were trying to implement a thousand body cams and it wasn't uh, an easy task. Uh, <clears throat> I was at a training session last week uh, with 83 other chiefs from the state of Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And I was listening to them and they all are going for this grant. And my question to them was, well, how are you gonna get around that policy? They seemed to think that it's feasible that we can work with that policy. It's not gonna be easy, and I think we are putting the officers at a somewhat of a disadvantage, but to save what turns out to be close to $100,000 in cost for these body cams, I guess it's kind of worth it. So that's why I decided to try to go forward with this and see if we can get this in by June 30th, because that's the deadline for the grant. Okay. That's everything in a nutshell. If you have any specific questions, I'll be glad to answer. Sure, I think councilors did. Yeah. Councilor Hurley? Hi, Chief. I know you, you talked a little bit about your concerns. Yes. Now, what allevi What really alleviate? You had like a lot of privacy issues with... Well, that's the thing. If <clears throat> The way it's worded, it says that it, uh, every sworn officer who has intercourse with the public has to have a camera and has to have it on. Well, there was... The way they're interpreting that, other chiefs are interpreting that, and the other chiefs that have gotten the cameras already, is that it's how many you have. So in other words, if I have enough to, to do the patrol division, then that would be, that's all I can issue to. I can't issue to detectives, the staff, or me, because I don't have that many. So they don't dictate how many you have, but they do dictate that if you're gonna have contact and you have a body cam, then that's when you can t have to turn it on and when you have to turn it off. You have to turn it off in certain instances, like if you're interviewing uh, a sexual assault victim, that has to be off. If you're uh, interviewing a juvenile, if you're in having anything to do with any of the protected classes, then you have to turn it off. And that's where, and that's, and there's other instances where you have to turn it on. If you stop to help somebody, a motorist who's broken down on the side of the road, you have to turn it on. And that's what I'm saying until, I'm, that's what makes me afraid is that there's gonna be instances where an officer forgets to turn it on, then it looks like we're trying to cover something up and it's not true, but that's the <laughs> implication you have. So that it seems simpler just not to deal with the body cams at all. We have the dash cams and they have saved us many times. We did test the body cams um, a couple of months ago, and the officer, there was only, we had one officer that wore it for a straight month. Two instances that really kind of solidified it with me that they are very important. One instance was a situation where um, a woman came into the lobby and made a complaint. This officer took that complaint. She then later came back and made a complaint against the officer and outright lied. She just outright lied about what he did and what he said and everything was recorded. So it was easy to solve that particular case, but 
without that body cam, what we would have had is a almost a he said, she said scenario. And in this day and age, we have to, we need more. So it sounds like you still have concerns. So. I have concerns. I truly do. But I'm also worried about the money. This is something that is going to probably have to happen eventually. If it isn't made a law, it's going to be everybody else has them and we don't. That doesn't look good either. So that's why I decided to try to get this done in time for June 30th. Okay, thank questions? you. Oh, excuse me. Councilor Ralph. Hey, thanks for coming, Chief. Um, I did have a number of concerns as well. Um, now that you're here in, in person talking about you know, some of the, the concerns that you had had yeah. been uh, alleviated and uh, the in-person scenario with the, the officer who demoed it for, for a month yeah. um, makes me feel a little bit better. Um, we have a hard, fast deadline of June 30th for the, the, the grant. Yes. And where's the grant come from? OPM. OPM, state money. Yes. Um, they have they have 10, oh, I think it was either 10 or $12 million that they set aside for the body camps for the police in the state. The state police, it was $2 million. So there's 10 million left. Most of that money is still left and has been all the way up until now. But now I think because the deadline is coming up that there's going to be a lot more departments applying for that grant. Okay. That's why I, I felt that we needed to do this. Do we have any policies or do you have any policies being drafted up working with uh, Jack Bradley or anybody? Uh, I have to go with the model policy that came out of post. We okay. already have the dash cam policy which is somewhat similar but we'll have to institute the uh, the post policy, the model policy that came from post. I yeah. don't have really any choice in that. Right. And some of that, like I said, some of that policy is 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 tough um one of the with the news stories of the past couple years on this and releasing footage to the press before oh. all that stuff i mean are we going to have any policies in place for that before june 30 or well i guess the funding deadline is june 30th when would they actually go in use uh, it would be episode? quite a while after that i i would have some time after getting them to institute them and those are the things that we'd have to work out but there's 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 a lot of that um, the little <laughs> nuances that we'd yeah. have to work through no question about it um, how they're dispersed I mean there's just a whole myriad of things that mm -hmm. we have to get through before we actually start issuing to officers but once we have them once we have the money in place and that's that's probably the the other thing too I just heard today I, w I wasn't aware of this is that I can't use asset forfeiture money to make the purchase and then get reimbursed so it's going to have to come from the town. I don't know if you have an extra hundred thousand dollars laying around that you'll get back, but uh, promises, promises. <laughs> Why can't you use as a rule? It's in the uh, the rules. See, I'm telling you, these rules are. Apt the it's a motion, rule from OPM. Because the information I got from Lieutenant Connolly said you're going to use that. Yeah. As a well, we didn't know, and I just heard that today, and I got to verify that. But the way it, it sounded was that it is there. When do you expect reimbursement? I that's the state. I'm not sure. <laughs> Twenty. The check is in the mail. I don't know. <laughs> um, well, that's. I don't know. Yeah, that's, you gotta do. What I, you gotta do. Right. Okay. Uh, Figure it out. Well, I would like make sure that there are policies in place before. And I, I don't know if the I can council promise you there'd be policies in place before the, the first one is even issued. Yeah. It'd have to be. There's no question about it. And there's going to be a training session. I mean, there's going to be multiple training sessions because there's some of the things that they have to do are going to be somewhat tough. And I know. I've been there. I've been on the street when so, all of a sudden something happens right in front of you, and the last thing you're thinking no, about is hitting, right. your, hitting your chest. And I'm not even sure the way the cameras are today, there's different types. We're going with the same company that with the dash cams, but they do make two different kinds. One is a, it's a bulkier one that, that sits up high. And the problem with that is, and I've seen the videos where if an officer all of a sudden has to draw his weapon and come up with it, guess what he's blocking? Yeah. 
My my bigger concern is the privacy of when something happens, it gets released to the media that there's an officer involved shooting or something like that. And, um, you know, folks and, and residents are, are up in arms about it. So the police department say, well, we got to release the video because the, the releasing the video shows exactly what happened. And then, you know, the fear of all the others will subside after that is released. And in doing so, the releasing of the video strikes or, or sets off another issue where privacy of others involved in it. Well, and now we've got a, a situation where we're defending the police department for releasing it too soon to take care of the person who's... Now you know why I was reluctant for all right. that time. Well, now you're, I'm... You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. I absolutely understand, yeah. but they have come a long way, and this is part of that purchase with this uh, redaction software. And it makes it a, a lot easier to, because you could even have, let's say, a juvenile in the background. Well, you can take that juvenile out. The only problem I'm going to have is who's going to do this redaction and use that software to do it. Okay. Um, Any good trial lawyer would say, you know, you touched that video before my client got a chance to see it, and God knows what else you took out of that video. Um. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Uh, I don't know what um, else to tell you, but it's the the redaction uh, part of it is just like one of those things that blur out the face or something like that. Right. It's not removing anything or taking anything away. Mm -hmm. It just blurs things. But there's a lot of other aspects of it too. I mean, officers are going into people's houses on a regular basis. They're supposed to have it on in certain instances, and they're supposed to have it off in other instances. Why they pick domestic violence? You can't have it on in a domestic situation. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that one because that's probably the most dangerous thing for an officer to go into. Yeah. But that's the rule. Talk to the people in North Haven, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah nine. Um, okay. So, yeah, we have our work okay. cut out for us. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough on me because I have to make those kind of decisions, and, and it's not going to be easy, and I'm going to have to discipline an officer if he makes a mistake. So I, I, that's why I, I've been very reluctant. But then I'm also practical in the sense that I don't think if I came to you for close to $100,000 out of the budget, I don't think you'd yeah. be happy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Chief. Two quick questions, and one you talked about a little bit. Is the plan just for the patrol officers to get it initially? Is the first question. The second question. How do the officers feel about this? Is there kind of a mood of the department on this issue? Just curious of what some of the feedback has been. So two questions, the, just the patrol officers and then kind of how officers might be feeling about this. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking to do the patrol division, but I'm, <clears throat> I need extras because the way the cameras work now, the battery lasts about 12 hours, which is fine for an eight hour shift, which is what they mostly have. But there are times, many times, where they have to work a double shift. So if they have one, there's a lot of different things. If they have one assigned to them now, I get, we got to have a, a spare yeah. to be able to give them to get through it. To answer the second part of your question, um, the officers are, are a little concerned, and I don't blame them. you got something that's recording on a regular basis sitting on your chest that's kind of intimidating. But they got used to the dash cams in the car, and they understand it now. They know how it works and how it it saves them in most instances. I mean, 99 times out of 100, it really saves them. We had a fatal police shooting with, without the camera and then with the camera. Both of them, the officers were exonerated. They were justified. But let me tell you, the one with the camera went a lot smoother than the one without. So I know the value of the, of the cams, the body cams. I mean, there's twofold in this, too. When you know you're being recorded, you have a tendency to act nicer too. So it, it's it's a good impetus for the officers to be nicer, which is exactly what I want, and it protects them against some people who have a tendency to not tell the truth. So if you try to balance this, it, it kind of leans towards that way that the body cams are are a good thing to have. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Chief, what's the life expectancy of a camera and what's your replacement plan? I'm sorry? <clears throat> what's the life expectancy of these cameras and what's your replacement plan? How are you going to 
fund it moving forward? Very, very good question. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the life expectancy is probably close to like to what the tasers are, and what we've gotten into with the tasers is replace four or five every year. It's in the budget, and that's what we ask for. That way, we never really get to the point where we're almost out, and I have to turn around and ask you for a lot of money to replace them. The tasers have been a godsend since we got them, what, 10, 12 years ago. Uh, and they're not even being used as much as when we first got them, too, because I think the people that we deal with on a regular basis know the officer's carrying a taser and they don't want to get tased. So they act nicer and there's less injuries for the officers and less injuries for the suspects. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good aspects that come out of that. And I th I think it was almost, we went two years without one deployment of a taser, but I don't want to go without them. Sure. So and the same with the, ca the cameras. To answer your question, the cameras would probably be along the same way. We have one year warranty that's paid up front. After that, we have, we would, we'll, we have the warranty, I believe that we have it in that proposal for like five years. So, um, we should be okay for the first couple of years anyways, mm -hmm. and then we should start trying to replace them and have them ready for the, when we, knew we need to replace them. The cameras are pretty rugged. Uh, it's the peripherals, the, um, the cable that if the, if the, just the stuff that goes sure. along with it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Forrest. This one is to the town manager. Uh, with the motion as it's currently written, uh, allowing asset forfeiture funds for the initial purchase. Is there any changes uh, that need to be made or? Yeah, I would motion? strip that from the motion if the chief has a, a new understanding of what's available. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I don't know if you're comfortable doing this on the fly. If you are, then we, sure. you know, I would certainly make the motion, but if not, um, we'll figure it out. Okay. So we'll set up the uh, grant as a receivable. So we smooth the silk with them auditors. I'll move to amend the motion and remove the language and allowing asset forfeiture funds for the initial purchase. Okay, so do I have a second to the amendment? Disallow. Disallow. We said to remove. Well, I'm removing, oh, remove. I'm yeah, removing the language remove. and allowing. Second. So, so it just is at the discretion of the manager. Okay. okay we Unless have you want me to put it at somebody else's. That was kind of a joke, Jack. I get it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to amend the main motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so the amendment has passed. Do we have any more discussion before we vote on the motion? Councilor Latina? Hi, Chief. Hi. Um, so estimated budget for all of this moving forward after the initial um, purchase is about fifty-five to 60000 Am I reading that correctly? No, it's much higher than that. Um, maybe I didn't understand the question. What was it again? How much is this going to cost us to maintain? Oh, maintain. Uh, yeah, as we go forward, the camera, the body cameras that we're looking at cost about $1,200 a piece. So we would be looking for, not in the first few years, but after that, about, well, I figure $4,800 to get four of them on a replacement schedule after about the third or fourth year, I'd say. And then what about maintenance of software and things of that nature? Yeah, the maintenance of the, of the software is going up to, if I remember correctly, it was we're paying $1,500 now a year for the software on the dash cams, and that will bring that cost of the, of the maintenance up to, I think it was, I want to say $3,500 or $4,000. So it's more money because of that redaction software. But uh, that, yeah, and that would be in the budget for next year and have you identified who would be kind of in charge of the program and how much well, that might cost I would have to put a lieutenant in charge of the program but as far as who's going to be able to have to do like the um, the you know like the redaction software and stuff like that who have to prepare the stuff it would be one of the officers that are assigned to headquarters <coughs> you know, either out of support services or one of the staff sergeants that I have that do other things Somebody's going to have to do it, and it has to be some of this part, somebody I have now. And what about the um, just the sheer space of the data? Do we have something to house that? Yeah, that's part of the 
the deal is the server that comes with it. It's it's a much larger server. It's a bigger server. It's a new server, and it's gonna um, it's in part of that price. Part of the initial fifty yes. sixty thousand. Yeah, it's more than that. It was it was eighty thousand eight hundred eighty five dollars, if I'm not mistaken. But I might have to tweak that a little bit because um, that's why. I, what so I, at this point, these numbers are inaccurate. Well, what I'm afraid of is that I need more of the cameras, and I might need to get more. Um, and if the state is going to pay for it, I would rather work out those numbers now. If you could give me, like, a top line or something like that, like, don't, you know, you authorize up to... Not to exceed? Yeah, not to exceed... I would appreciate it because it's eighty thousand something dollars. If you could make it like ninety thousand, then I have some play there into getting because I, I do want to get some of the peripherals, more of the peripherals, so the officers have a choice in how they carry the camera. I would like to get a couple of more cameras because we need spares. Right now, what we have is if I give everyone in a patrol division, I have on that schedule thirty cameras. There's uh, twenty. I want to say 29 in the patrol division. That only leaves us with one spare. Unfortunately, I, I wasn't able to work on these numbers until, because of the deadline, we had to get it before you. I would have much rather had a, a much better finished product, but um, we're going to need more cameras to, to have those spares. As a, as a policy measure across the state, do you know how many communities do these body cams? Right now, it's very low except for the state police. Uh, I'd say out of, oh, there's 103 police departments, 107 police departments, I'd say maybe 10. But what I heard at that training that I went to is everybody's going for this deadline. A lot of people are, a lot of departments are. But it's not a mandate at this point. It's not a mandate. Okay. But if you can read the future, I have a feeling it's going to be eventually, and then we'd have to come up with the cost. Thank you. Other questions, Councilor Rell? Um, just a couple quick questions, maybe for the town manager. Do we have another council meeting this month? Not in May, no. You're canceling the 21st. So that puts us at June 2nd, or the first week of June. I think it's June well, 4th. Are, we haven't canceled the 21st yet. We have no, not. It's on the agenda tonight. It's on the agenda for this evening. It's um, the last agenda. I, I got a uh, following up on uh, Councilwoman Latina's questions. I hate to do this to you, Chief, but I got a couple more. Not more questions for you. Um, but, I mean, we're now taking this out of town budget rather than asset for forfeiture, which, you know, I didn't think about prior to tonight's dialogue on this um, some of the policy questions are still up in the air um, I would like to and I know you have a hard fast deadline of June 30th we do have a meeting June 4th and then probably one June 18th if I'm not mistaken and we could do the 21st as well I, I would put a motion out to table this until at least two weeks from now to get a little bit more information. I know you're grappling with some of the same concerns that we're grappling with. If it's feasible for you to give two more weeks, could that be done? Well, the only thing I'm worried about is it's like a first come first basis on this grant. And if that money gets eaten up, um, then we'll be out. That's the only thing, that's one of the concerns I have. I have a lot of concerns about this, I truly do. Uh, but I think that we can work it out. I think we can work with the policy the way it is. We have to, and um, we'll just go forward. I, I don't know how else to do it. The numbers, as long if you can give me that top figure, I promise you we'll keep it within that. It's just that I need to figure out couple of things with this thing and, and I mm -hmm. also want to make sure that the officers are comfortable with uh, this transition I don't foresee any um, major objections to this but you never know do we have 
the funds and the bound uh, budget for this? I mean, I, would we have to uh, amend any of the budget tonight going forward? No, no. We would set up the grant money as a receivable, so the budgetary impact is negligible. Just a wash. Just a wash. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? No. Any other questions? Okay, seeing none, we've made the amendment and we voted on that. We have the main motion on the, ta on the table. Um, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Any abstentions? The motion passes 6-3. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, item 1D, renewal of auditor's contract. Do I have a motion? Uh, I'd like to move to designate Bloom Shapiro and Company PC to audit the books and accounts of the town, including the Board of Education, pursuant to the requirements of Section 719 of the Town Charter, and to authorize the town manager to enter into agreement with Bloom Shapiro and Company PC for that purpose for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2018. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Town manager? Uh, I'm going to ask Finance Director O'Neill to walk you through this one. Good evening again. <laughs> As the auditee, um, we issued an RFP for uh, audit services in April. Um, received responses from three firms, and just in the last couple of weeks, of you know, given the sort of compressed time schedule for you know, to get an auditor in and the need to do interviews and things like that have you know, made the proposal. We asked Bloom to provide us with a quote for just a one-year extension of the five-year arrangement that just expired with them. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Any questions? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Um, item 1E, cancellation of the May 21st Town Council meeting. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? N nay. Any? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> One opposed? Mm -hmm. Any abstentions? Okay, motion carries. On to... Um, item 1A, the adoption of the Town of Weathersfield 2018-2019 budget. Town Manager, <coughs> can you begin? Of course. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council Members. Uh, this evening you're scheduled to adopt the fiscal 1819 town budget uh, ending June 30th, 2019. Over the past couple of months, you have reviewed the manager's proposed budget, and we've talked about various changes and amendments uh, to that this evening. Uh, before you on the podium tonight are the necessary motions to adopt the budget based upon some adjustments made in the last couple of days. Uh, the adjustments are there's an additional $50,000 removed from the town side uh, of which I can, uh, Finance Director O'Neill can give you the list of those adjustments. There is uh, 190000 additional dollars removed from the Board of Ed budget and there is an additional $300,000 placed into the road paving fund. Uh, those changes were made today. Um, the outcome is a mill rate of 40.78 and a total spending increase of 2.38. total increase including the road fund. Um, the motion this evening 
are, are various. The first set of motions uh, change or amend the proposed budget in terms of revenue items and expenditure items. A lot of the individual department amendments you look at are for health insurance. We are, we are adjusting the health insurance spend by about $135,000, and that touches various departments, so you see reductions in the various departments. Um, last week, we talked about a, some changes to the Board of Ed in the town to bring over to the town side the custodial supervisor position. Uh, that is unchanged from last week. That is included in this product here this evening. And then those amendments that we just that we just went over. So, um, with, uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Mr. O'Neill and I are here to talk about those, and we can go over the list of the fifty thousand dollar reductions on the town side. Thank you. Do I have any questions on any of the? Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mike, can you go over those $50,000 worth of cuts on the town side, please? Sure. Probably the, the easiest way to do that is um, hopefully everyone has a nine-page handout with a series of spreadsheets. Pages eight and nine, the last two pages of that package, uh, detail the expenditure adjustments from the town manager's budget. So if you turn to page eight and you just look at the, the headings, um, the first column of numbers to the left, I'm sorry, I got them in front of me. I should be doing this with my. So the first column here is the town manager's budget. And then there's a series of uh, columns from on the, on the overhead here from E through M which are various adjustments. Most of those you have seen um, in, your, in the various uh, workshops and meetings that we've had over the last couple of weeks. Um, I'll just run through them quickly. There's the, the pension adjustment, which that has uh, no impact, but it was just a, a, a reclass of some balances. You can see all the way at the bottom of page nine the kind of the net impact at the bottom of each of these columns. So there's the pension adjustment, no change there to expenditures. Um, town manager mentioned the adjust, adjustment to the uh, medical benefits of 135,000. That is, um, <clears throat> that's a $10,000 increase from what you saw last week. The $10,000 increase is part of the 50,000 of adjustments, so that's the first item. Next column is uh, disability insurance. Um, that's currently being negotiated with several insurance companies. Um, we're looking, just uh, got news today that uh, we can expect as much as $16,000 of savings there. That number last week was 10,000. So the $6,000 increase is another uh, component of the 50,000. <coughs> And then I'll just go a bit more quickly through the next few here because these are ones that you have seen an adjustment down on the uh, line striping budget in the engineering department. Um, town manager mentioned moving the facilities position out of the Board of Ed and into uh, physical services. That's a net increase of uh, $30,806. Uh, with the passage of the state budget last week, renter's rebate is no longer a uh, responsibility of the town, so we take that out of social and youth services. That's $135,000. And then a uh, $5, $530 increase to the town council budget for the audit fee based on the quote on the uh, one-year extension that, that was just, uh, just treated. In addition to that, um, We've been asked to present a uh, $190,000 cut to the Board of Education budget. That's column L. And then finally is the, the rest of the town reductions. So that's the rest of the 50,000. You can see that that totals uh, 34,000 plus the 10 and the six that we saw in the benefits. And I'll just, I'll just run down that column 
for you so you can see that. Um, there's $3,000 decrease to the town manager's budget. That's $2,000 taken out for the annual conference and $1,000 um, in savings for the floater position um, in that office. We would just delay filling that position for a month. $10,000 reduction to the physical services budget for savings from the street lights project. Those are energy savings for the LED lights. Uh, $6,000 coming out of the MDC sewer line. There's a small piece in there. Uh, we pay for the sewer charges for the housing authority. They have been doing renovations to their units and we're seeing a decrease in the water consumption as a result and a decrease in the, in the sewer charges. So they're just uh, money that's available there, $6,000. Um, in the transfer line, uh, we would uh, propose to reduce the transfers to the capital non-recurring expenditure fund um, for $5,000, and that's uh, related to the survey tool that was requested by the town engineer. Um, I think the total of that was 10,000? It was 38. Okay, 38. Um, we'll and see what's available at the end of the year to make up that difference. Right. And the last item is a $10,000 reduction in the reserve for retiree line for the, uh, that's for reimbursements to retired police officers. We have a, a, a contractual obligation to pay for out of pocket expenses. Those were really ramping up. Uh, two and three years ago, and we had we had started to do the same with the budgeted amount. We added twenty thousand dollars in the proposed budget, um, but based on just the last two months of claims, we think that we can we can take some of that out. So that's what we've done there. It looks like this year is going to come in uh, lower than we expected. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do you want to page up back to the motions? Please. Well, actually, I have a question on still some of the cuts. Mm -hmm. If we're looking at the renter's rebate of 135000 excuse me, I just lost it, page 8 of 9, did we, had we ever paid our share of the renter's rebate Not in the yet. past before? When did we budget the 135000 for our share of the renter's rebate? It's in this current year budget. And next year, when we put the budget together, we had the assumption and the information that we would have to do that again. Uh, the budget that passed the legislature provides in 2019 that the state will again pay those bills. We are still expecting to have to pay some share of that in the current year. So when the town voted for the budget last May. Last November. It was an adjustment in November. Yes. We did adjust for it where we put money in because the town or the state budget had us. But we never. We haven't, we haven't spent that yet. We haven't spent it yet. We haven't gotten a bill yet. And then we are cutting that out that portion out because the state is going to be fully funding it for 19 for 19 would we get a bill for that money that has been expended since i mean it's not a full year it's our understanding is that the state was going to shift half of the cost of renters rebate to the town in the current year 18 we have yet to see that bill, but we are still expecting it to happen. But not for the full. Well, the full cost is 270. We were told 50% of those costs would be borne by the towns through a reduction <laughs> of state aid somewhere. So rather than make it a reduction to revenue, which we don't have, we made it an increase in expense. So it'll offset one way or the other. Did we ever get a reduction in revenue? Not yet. Are we anticipating a reduction in revenue? We are still anticipating that that $135,000 will be collected somehow by the state of Connecticut. 
For this year. For this year. Okay. Thank you. We have not heard differently. Are there any other questions on these spreadsheets before we move on? Okay. Page up to the motions? Yes, please. Can you page back up to the motions, please. <coughs> Uh, motion that the budget as submitted by the town manager March 30, 2018 be hereby is amended as follow. Increase $20,000 to account 41203 building department. Increase $37,198 for account 42501 pilot stained owned property. Increase $7,824 for account 42515 State Pilot Colleges and Hospitals increase $986,068 to account 43001 Education Cost Sharing. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. So this motion is adding back revenue, adding revenue from the state. Yeah, based upon the adopted state budget. Uh, the second, third, the second, third, and fourth lines are additional revenue as adopted by the state. The twenty thousand dollars to the building department fees were talked about last week is something we see as feasible. Okay, thank you. Is there any discussion? Okay, seeing none. Um, all in. Okay, all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Abstained. Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Next motion. Motion that the budget is submitted by the town manager March 30, 2018. Being here is amended as follows. Increase $5,530 to account 110 town council. Decrease $4,787 account 120 town manager. Decrease $2,768 account 140 data services. Decrease $359, account 150, town clerk. Decrease $4,019 to account 220 for finance. Decrease $1,934 for account 230, tax assessor. <clears throat> Increase $72 uh, to account 240 for tax. I mean, first one was tax assessor, this one was tax collector. Decrease $1,613 for account 300, planning and development. Decrease $3,801 to account 410, building inspections. Decrease $12,254 to account 420, police. Decrease $989 to account 440, fire marshal. Decrease $10,313 to account 510, engineering. Increase $99,764 to account 520 physical services. Decrease $137,620 to account 620 social and youth services. Decrease $9,756 to account 700 for public library. Decrease $5,623 to account 800 parks and recreation. Decrease $6,000 to account 940 MDC slash Housing Authority Sewards. Decrease $25,000 to account 950 transfers CIP slash CNEF. Decrease $60,000 to account 960 reserves for retirees. Increase $300,000 to account 410 or 4110 4410-54437. Street construction. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion? <coughs> Councilor Hurley. What's the physical services, 99,000? That's the addition of the uh, custodial supervisor position from the Board of Ed. Okay. Any other questions? Councilor Rao. 
The 12,254 police reduction, which so, one is that? It's all health insurance. Engineering looks high because $7,000 of that is the line striping and the remainder is health insurance. Councilor Hurley. What's the 60,000 then for reserve for retirees? 25 from compensated absences, 25 from heart and hypertension to help offset the pension adjustment and the other 10 is from the reimbursements that we just discussed. Any other questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Any abstentions? Motion carries 6-3. Next motion. Motion that the budget as submitted by the town manager, March 30th, 2018 being hereby is amended as follows to decrease the total appropriations for school purposes by $299,194. Do we have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Councilor Hurley? So the reduction was 190,000, not really 300 because that 100,000 of that was just the movement. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, I know they gave us a list of $500,000 of reductions. Um, and I thought we were talking 300, that you guys were talking 300, but I guess it was only 190. When we went through it, we were looking at it, and we figured the 109,000 for uh, moving the position over to physical services and taking a look at the area of the 250 and cuts of the board presented to us if we took 190,000, it would leave them some of that money in there to do some of the things because they were cut drastically last year. So this way, really the, the cut to them is the bushy position and the um, 190,000 out of the 250 that they uh, requested. But the bushy position yeah. isn't a cut. It, it's a transfer over, but it's a cut on their budget because the money was no, in I their budget. That. So we had well, to move we're calling, it over. We're calling it a cut. Well, reduction, I should say. That's part of the reduction in their budget, is those benefits for that position as well as 190000 additional. Other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Abstaining? Okay, motion passes 6-3. Next motion. Motion that the total appropriations for school purposes be set at $58,728,469 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018. I have a second. Second. Okay. Any comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Abstentions. Motion passes 6-3. Motion. Motion that the council, town council adopt the budget as submitted by the town manager on March 30th, 2018, and as amended by the town council in the sum of $43,644,034 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018. Second. Okay, well, thank you. I'm thank overly you. anxious to second that one. Thank you, Councilor Lesser. Um, do we have any. Just kidding. Just kidding. Do we have any um, questions or comments on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Abstentions. Motion carries 6-3. Motion that the total appropriations for the capital and non-recurring road fund be set at $1,800,000 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any questions or comments on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Motion passes 9-0. Thank you. Motion that the total appropriations for the library purposes be set at $2,009,135 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any comments or questions on this motion? Councilor Rell. This is a question for uh, Mike O'Neill. The library budget at 2.009 or 2,135 dollars 
What does that represent as an increase in last year's budget for the library? If you have that right in front of you. I don't, but I can get it for you quickly. He's Mike O'Neill. He can do anything. <laughs> Computer or the calculator on the iPhone. I got a, I got a calculator. <laughs> Two point zero one percent, and that's from the November. Okay, adopted budget. Adopted budget. That's right. What is uh, <laughs> the total proposed increase that the items five and four combined as a total percentage above uh, last year's as a percentage? So schools and the town. <coughs> mm -hmm. Excuse me. With or without the library? With the library. 2.67. 2.67. You look at the, there's a few different figures with you know, combinations of, on the, on the last expenditure page in the lower right hand corner. Page six of nine. With road fund, without road fund, with you know, town only, town and board. And board oh, okay. Bed. Overall increase with road? Yes. 2.67. Okay. Well, I must commend Brooke Berry and the library board for, again, coming in at the lowest of any increases, uh, I think, of any department, if I'm not mistaken. They've done a pretty good job of holding the line, as they always have, um, not going above what our town budget goes up. Well, they pay no electricity. They pay no water. They pay no sewer. They don't pay for heat or natural gas. So we carry that on our side. We do? Yes. Okay. So I congratulate Brooke as well for getting someone else to pay her bills. <laughs> <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> okay. Um, She'll take it. And then are we, um, and we are also, will be footing the bill on their MDC increase as well. I would imagine that is part of our increase. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on the library motion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Motion carries 9-0. Thank you. Motion at the total amount to be raised by taxes for the town library, school, and capital and non-recurring roads funds purposes combined be set at $89,428,361. For the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All right, any comments or questions on this motion? Councilor Latina. Mr. O'Neill, so this is <coughs> combined a 2.67% increase? Uh, in the levy? Mm -hmm. No, I'll give you that. Hold on. 2.67 would be total expenditures. Mm -hmm. Can I give you just the town levy? I don't have it combined. I can figure it out, but I don't know how patient everyone will be. It's one more mill, correct? Current year levy is 39.77, so it's slightly more than one mill. So does the number that we talked about the other day still stand? Uh, nearly $400 more a year on the average household? Okay, one question at a time. Sorry. Let me go back. No, it's okay. Uh, just taking the, the general fund levy, the 88 going from uh, 85.9 million in the current year up to 88.2 million is a 2.7% increase. Okay. And we were talking, I'm trying to remember, uh, last Thursday, when I gave you those figures, I think we were slightly, well, we were slightly higher than this, what you see here. So those, that percentage increase would come down from what we talked about last week. I don't have it in front of me. Right, so, but roughly one mil would equate to, I think we said it was about nearly 400 per household, the average house. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Was 
the average house 167 It'd be one dollar per thousand. So if your house is valued one hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars, one mil would equal two hundred dollars. And how many homes are worth that much in this town? That's the average. Two forty something. Whatever the average the is. Average. Two forty. The average was one sixty-seven. I think. I don't need a green assess 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 You don't have to calculate it. It's a lot. Go ahead. Um, so that's motion eight. We have a, um, a motion and a second. All in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Is there any? Are there any other? Is there any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain? Um, opposed? No. no. Abstentions. Motion carries six three. Motion that the general fund tax rate for all taxable properties be set at forty point two five mills for current for the fiscal year beginning. July 1, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, any comments or questions on this motion? Councilor Hurley? <coughs> Another one for Michael. Um, we're at 40.78 all in mill rate. Does that put us in the top 10% of towns in our, in our state? I don't know. I mean, it's... It's one of it's the highest. I mean, when you get over 40, it's, it's a small group. I don't, know the, I don't know the exact figures on that. Okay, but it's up there. <coughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Rell? Um, what is our current mill rate for our cars at in town? Thirty-nine seventy-seven. It mirrors the, uh, the start rate is thirty-two, or whatever the state set it at the end of last year. Next year it'll be parity, forty seventy-eight. So, thirty-nine uh, is the current levy for cars this current year. Current year, what we adopted in November is a mill rate of thirty-nine. Thirty-nine for cars. For cars. Yes. So we're going to see any or taxpayers or residents who have real value, um, real estate, uh, as well as uh, real property, I guess, real property and motor vehicles will see both increases in their vehicle tax bill and their real property tax bill. Yes. Okay. Is there a state law requiring any cap right now on the mill rate for vehicles? 45. That was just adopted? Yes. Could towns go below their real property mill rate on vehicles still? Could we keep it at 39? If you want to either find a way to reduce the difference from the budget or shift it to real estate. Okay. I've heard nothing this evening of any major reductions that would impact the budget. So, yeah, there's no, I mean, if we're increasing on everything else, there's doesn't look like there's any will to decrease any more to keep motor vehicles at 39. Okay. Um, just, well, just a quick look of those towns that do have higher than 40 mill rate um, of 169 towns plus different districts. I can't come up with the quick number of how many, but I do look at some of them. Uh, Middletown, New Britain, Hartford, New Haven, Waterbury. West Hartford. Yeah, West Hartford. Glastonbury, I think. Uh, Glastonbury's at, well, at least, I don't know if they've adopted a budget yet this year. Close, they did, they're in the high 30s. Yeah, they're in the high 30s. Just, I think they're just a little higher than what we are currently before tonight's adoption. Um, that does put us in a select class of municipalities above 40. And I think I made the comments last year when uh, the first budget uh, this town adopted over $100 million dollars. Uh, was a sizable increase and uh, was taken aback by many um, taxpayers. We are now going above, not only staying above $100 million, but we are for the first time going over 40 mills, and it does put us in a select class. Uh, I know the, uh, the cuts from the municipalities, or from the state to municipalities, had an um, adverse effect on uh, a number of towns' uh, budgets, but um, I think hearing from taxpayers at our um, public hearing on uh, 
the proposed budget, uh, it, it's unsustainable. Um, I don't think we can keep going back to, to taxpayers year after year to, uh, to ask them to, to pony up more uh, on the local level um, as well, um, looking at the future at what they are possibly going to do in the next two years on the state level. Um, one thing in common, with the exception of possibly West Hartford, um, but looking at all these towns and then looking at the um, population statistics over the years from those towns that have uh, 40 mil or higher, uh, their population has uh, decreased in pretty much every one of those municipalities that have adopted budgets over 40 mils in the last 10 years. I don't think uh, we would want to see Weathersfield do that. Um, I think going over 40 is a mistake. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Hurley, did you have something? Yeah, I did. Um, we did have, I know the town manager said there's no other proposals to cut, but we did talk about other cuts, another 300000 or so from the Board of Ed and another fifty or so from the town side. So I just want to put that out there that there was discussions at least from three of us that we wanted to see more cuts. Any other comments? Councilor Forrest. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it seems like the, but the, the mill rate, as we sort of discussed before, and this is to Councilor Rell's sort of uh, discussion point, was the mill rate's set on the amount of money that we want to raise based on our grant list. So if we're in the non, if we've gone, we are at a, our mill rate could go down or will go down after we do a re um, a reevaluation of our property. So that's sort of a misnomer to some extent because you could have a town that hadn't done um, a reevaluation of their property rates in four years and be on the end of that spectrum, which is exactly where we are because we'll be going in the next year, and have uh, almost what you might call an artificially high mill rate because the mill is based on a lower grand list because we haven't done the reevaluation. Where on the other side of that, you could have a town that had recently gone through reevaluation, has an increased grand list because of it, and therefore their mill rate goes down. And I remember you know, I've been on this council or on a board in this town for over a decade now, and we have had high fluctuations in the mill rate where the mills can go down significantly. Uh, just through a revaluation. I remember um, when it was going, when the property prices were going through the roof in 2006, 2007, we had a revaluation that year and our mill rate dropped significantly, like a tremendous amount, where you could go from 40 mills to 32 mills with a high, with a high rate. And I'm not saying that's necessarily going to happen, although it certainly could, but it really is not fair to uh, uh, weigh yourself against the town depending on uh, when it comes to a mill rate, depending on when the re-evaluation of the property of the property was, so um, to to use that sort of a comparison because it appears to be what you're doing. I'm not saying that it's going to change the decision necessarily, but to be fair to the public, that the mill rate is merely a measure of how much to uh, raise revenue against a grand list. That's all that 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 is. So if you have a low grand list, you can have a, a very, very high mill rate, so to speak. If you have a high grand list, you can have a very, very low mill rate. And that's, of course, why pushing redevelopment in order to increase the grand list in order to lower the mill rate is so very important. But um, that, uh, to say we happen to be in a year where our reevaluations are going to come in the next following years, and I would anticipate that even if you were to raise more revenue, our mill rate will go down because our grand list will be uh, will be higher just simply because of the uh, increase in the value of property over time you know that trend that just general trend line as it goes up so um, I think it would be I think it's more fair to look at and to make if you were to normalize the data that you just went into and say well when was the most recent reevaluation of their grand list and then normalize it for all of those revaluations I'm not saying that's going to necessarily bring us near the bottom, of course, because we are a suburb of a major city, and that's what happens when you bring in various, um, various amounts of required infrastructure to those areas. Uh, but um, it is not necessarily accurate to simply say that we, we happen to be in the, in the year just prior to the revaluation, and therefore there's pressure on the mill rate in order to go up. So. Um, I think that if we look at it for more from a global standpoint about how we're looking at somewhere about 2.5%, that that's extremely fiscally conservative 
uh, considering some of the needs that we have in this town. And so um, instead of harping, I think, on the mill rate, probably more accurate would be to understand how the, we did the balance. And this council looks like it's going to do the balance between understanding uh, the, tax, the tax implications and then understanding the needs of the of the uh, of the community. Thank you, Councillor Forrest. Sure, Councillor yeah, Haley. I just don't under think un I don't think Councillor Forrest understands that people have to pay a lot of money when it goes over forty point seven eight, and I think it is a good measure. And if we looked at our house prices, they're actually if you look going year down. over year, they're actually going down. So I don't see this getting any better. So I think it's an ink correct assumption of what he's even saying. I think the mill rate is a good thing to look at because of the uh, fluctuating revenues from the state. And uh, it used to be okay just to look at how much your expenses were going up because you could tell what your, uh, you could actually get a good read because the state's revenues were coming in pretty level every year. Now you have to look at the mill rate and I think people are gonna not be happy with a 40.78. Um, and I think with the conversation we did have with Fauna the, in the, the town assessor was that her belief is that the reval will show an increase in um, commercial real estate, which will improve our grand list. Um, whether, or not, hmm? whether or not that will rear itself in a lower mill rate or in a um, uh, less taxes being paid by the resident on real property, on their real property, is yet to be de determined, though. Um, and we also did get figures from surrounding towns on percentage increases of their budgets, did we not? We collected some. And where do we fall at 2.67%? On the lower end of those increases. Are there any other comments or questions? Did, oh. Well, going off of that, did any of those include the city of Hartford? I don't look at the city of Hartford. Okay. They're a ward of the state at this point. <laughs> That's uh, probably a good idea. What's the percentage of um, real estate to commercial? I mean, commercial to uh, personal residential. residential. Twelve percent commercial to residential. I don't know, something like that. We'd have to check and get back to you. So, a majority of the folks who are paying the taxes, we rely heavily on residential. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are a typical World War post World War II first tier suburb bedroom community. With the si with the Silestine Highway and the Berlin Turnpike. That was a choice that was made many, many years ago. I know. I just, the one thing I will agree with, Matt, is that we definitely need to do a better job and try to get our redevelopment to, to increase. Um, I think that we are lacking severely, and I think that's a challenge for us moving forward so that we can disperse the tax across the board and take on more commercial as opposed to residential. Because we do have needs, a lot of them. Um, and I think it's increasingly getting very pricey to live in Wethersfield. I think we all wholeheartedly agree with you on uh, the need for you know, increased and continual economic development. Anything else? Okay. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Any abstentions? Motion passes 6-3. <coughs> Motion that the capital and non-recurring roads fund tax rate for all taxable properties be set at 0 0.53 mills for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. <clears throat> okay. Any discussion or questions on the um, road tax? Councillor Bell. This um, mill increase for the um, roads, I take it that's re repaving for the most part? It's the road paving fund which goes to resurface town roads and have they been set for this well this budget would affect this fall and next spring yes and those have been set already we could probably look to expand the spring program with possible state funding or within our own budget 
Well, the, the road fund consists now, if you vote on this, of $1.8 million. Of that, a significant piece is state money, 400 town aid road and 213, which is LOSIP money. So 600 of the 1.8 is state money. Now, um, LOSIP, we reserve and uh, gather up several years worth of project money to build, rebuild an entire street. So that money is not used annually. It's used maybe every third year. And we're looking to use that in this budget cycle? No, we're looking probably need another year to gather up enough funds. The uh, LOSIP project is Dix Road, and LOSIP has been reduced in the mm -hmm. 19 budget by $100,000. Our LOSIP funds have been reduced? The, the state has reduced the LOSIP funding. All right, but, and we are increasing ours from last year. What did we set for last year, 1.5? Now, of the 1.5 from last year, there was more LOSIP money. To get to 1.5 in the proposed <laughs> budget, we replaced the LOSIP loss with local dollars to stay at 1.5. This evening, you've added an additional $300,000. So overall, the town's commitment to roads is increasing over $400,000 in the 19 budget. Where did we get the, the 100000 from? We added it to the 2.5. 75% increase in spend in the mill rate. Okay. And then the 300,000, the additional 300,000, where did we find that this year? That was added this evening and it was uh, partially, I would imagine, with it was um, 100 and part of it was the 190 from the Board of Ed cuts and 50,000 from the town cuts. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments or questions? I would like to say that the number one um, comment I receive from residents or complaints I receive from residents via email, via phone, or when I'm out at an event is the condition of our roads. Um, Mr. Mazzarella made mention that roads are something everybody in our town uses. Um, and after discussion, we did decide that it was something that it was a place where we felt like we were not adequately funding it. Um, and this increase of 300000 is goes a small way to increasing that funding. It's certainly, the roads can certainly use way more money than that, but we felt that this was a threshold that we could handle and that we felt town staff would be able to um, handle increasing in their spring um, program. So if there are no other comments or questions, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining, motion passes 9-0. Thank you. I believe that is the end of our uh, budget motions. Am I correct? That is correct. Mr. Manager? We okay. have an adopted budget. Congratulations. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, are there any other comments or questions on the budget? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain, motion passes. Thank you and have a good night.